G'day, I'm Phil Storey, a network detective. This video is about TCP Selective Acknowledgements, or SACs. In part one, we'll investigate some simple selective acknowledgements and see what they look like and to get the idea of the way selective acts work. And then in part two, we'll look at uh, some more complex examples. This is the first video in a series that I intend to do. The aim of the series is to help us understand what Wireshark is telling us by looking at the same packet captures with another tool called NetData, which is more graphical. The packet capture we're looking at today came from this packetlife.net blog. There's a link to it. And there's the link circled where you can download the capture file yourself. And I'd encourage you to get that file and follow along yourself. All right, let's get started. Here's the capture file in Wireshark. And it's a very small capture file. There's only 39 packets. Uh, what we see in the beginning is a, a three-way handshake. We see a get of a uh, HTTP. There's an acknowledgement to that get. And note that round trip time there, just on 20 milliseconds. That's the shortest round trip time in the capture. And as we scroll down, when we get to the end, we have this. So that tells us that a packet went missing. And then here are our selective acts. So if you notice down here, the uh, selective act number, keep your eye on that as I step through the selective acts. Just notice how it's the left edge stays constant and the right edge increases. We finally get a retransmission. And then last, very last packet, number 39, is an, a normal acknowledgement that tells us we've received all the data so far. Now what I've done is I've taken the Wireshark data and I've pasted it into this PowerPoint slide. Uh, the intention is I'll make this PowerPoint that I'm using available as a PDF and I'll put the link uh, probably below the video on YouTube. So this is the story that we have. That just tells you what I've just told you a minute ago. The important information is in the three-way handshake, both sides they can deal with selective acts and in the, the four duplicate acts down there and we'll look at those uh, in more detail in a moment. So we can confirm that in this capture the, uh, the first SYN, SAC permitted, and the SYNAC, SAC permitted. So we're ready to go. This connection is allowed to use uh, selective acts. Now, again, I've cut the little snippets of Wireshark and I've put them into this PowerPoint pack. So frame 29 is a, the last normal act we got before our gap. So this was basically acknowledging all data up to the 17377. The left-hand edge of the first selective act is this number. Subtracting those two numbers, we see that the size of our gap, the missing data, is 1448, which is our one packet size. This is a very complex slide. I've tried to highlight things that are important. What I want to do is we'll come back to this slide after we've looked at what all this looks like in a software product called NetData. Because this is a small capture file, I'm going to use NetData Lite as you can see, NetData Lite, or its idea is visualizing IT performance. And so what we see is the visual aspects and the visual charts that NetData produces just make things easier to do. Now I'll drop the capture onto that area there, as it says. That's been analyzed. And what we can see is that, that NetData has these buttons. And, and on these buttons, you'll see that the tiny little versions of the charts that, that you'll get when you press each of these buttons. These, these buttons are in the order that an analyst would normally proceed through things. But today, we know we just want a data flow chart. I'll just press that button. So here, we've jumped straight to uh, what NetData calls a flow chart. So basically, with, there's a left-hand scale here, and that is sequence numbers. And this, these packets uh, relate to the sequence numbers. And the right-hand side is a window size. So anything on the chart that's to do with the window size, this purple line is the client receive window. And, and we can see that in our very first SYN packet, that was set at 5840 bytes. And so it stays at 5840. And then we see it ramp up as we go through the, uh, the slow start phase. So all the packets in this particular capture are on this chart, uh, client and server. There is only one real client packet, and that was this one and that is the one with the get in it. To make things a bit simpler, I'm just going to neaten this up by turning off client packets. And I'm just going to change that because it's just 
uh, nicer for this example. And so here's our, our chart. Now, so these are server packets. Now, if we hover on them, by using the Alt, X, and Y keys, I can move them, and then Alt, Z will let me lock them on. So what we can see here, uh, we have we start our uh, connection. The, the first set of packets we get from the server is a little burst of four. They're all size 1488. Then we have a round trip time. This blue line here is the acknowledgement line. So as packets are acknowledged by, at the server, then we see this blue line step up. So we can step through the whole uh, set of packets as we saw. We had a first burst of four. So that's the start of our slow start. Then a round trip. The acts get back to the server. Then we have a next burst of eight full-size packets. So we're seeing the uh, slow start in action, the doubling. Then there's another round trip and we see the acts. And then um, we have this last burst of four packets. If this was a large uh, file transfer, we'd expect to see a burst of 16 there uh, because of the doubling in the slow start phase. What I'll do is zoom into this. Now we get a good view of um, what happened and what the selective acts looked like. So there should have been a packet here. This was the gap. This was the missing packet that we saw in Wireshark. Then we had these four data packets that did arrive. The net data has colored this one red as an indication to us, it's a visual cue, that this packet followed a gap. And this is, pack, as we see, that's packet number 30 in our capture. Now, there was a selective act generated for each of these received packets. So we had four selective acts. Now, the first selective act that we saw in the capture was packet number 31. And what that was telling us was we have received this data, but we have not received this data. And remember the left and right edge, which we'll go back and look at. So this is, in fact, the left edge of the selective act, and this one here was the right edge. So as the second selective act arrived, the right edge steps up, and the third and the fourth, we step up to here. So by the time we're at this point, what, we, what the sender knows is that the receiver has received these four packets worth of data, but we're missing this crosshatch, which happens to be the one packet worth. The little numbers here, by the way, uh, they're just a count of duplicate acts. Because selective acts also count as duplicate acts, and we had four of them. In fact, each of our selective acts was uh, also a duplicate act. So at this point here in time, this is time, um, the sender knows that there was one packet missing. So in response, the sender transmits this one. Now this is just a, uh, a normal data packet. NetData has colored it green as another visual cue that this is a packet that's filling a gap. Uh, after we received that, there was a normal ACK, so one round trip time over here, and the normal ACK took the blue line all the way to the top. So at this point here, at the end of the capture, everything is fully acknowledged. So that's what they look like uh, on this kind of chart. While I'm here, I'll just zoom back to the left and just talk about these green areas. So the green areas down here are giving us an indication of what were the packets in flight at each stage of this. This selective act information from Wireshark is now a little bit easier to understand. We had, in frame 29, a normal act saying we've received everything up to this number. Then we had a missing packet, and we had a selective act that said duplicate acking to that same level, and we've got a new uh, range of numbers now, a left and right edge. So this was the top of the crosshatched area, and this was the top of the blue area on top of that. And what we see is that each selective act, the top of the blue gets bigger, but the bottom of the blue st stays the same. And finally, when we had the retransmission, we got a normal act saying we've got the whole lot. So this is what the net data flow chart looks like, and I've put it into the PowerPoint, which you'll be able to get as a PDF. And I've put some various bits of information. Here's what the the Wireshark uh, stream TCP trace chart looks like. And what we see, the underlying structure is very similar. There's our four packets, our eight packets, and then our, our four packets with a gap, and then the filling in the gap. But you see in this area, we have the act line, the normal act line, but there's nothing in here to indicate anything about uh, selective acts. So if there's any Wireshark developers watching this, um, maybe you could make a note or 
how could you show selective ACK information in there? Now, selective ACKs are defined in RFC 2018. There's a link to that. And um, I've just collected a whole bunch of information here about it. I'll let you read it. But the important things, or the bits I'd like to stress, are selective acts can't be used in a TCP connection unless both sides agree and they agree during the three-way handshake. Selective acts are also considered to be a normal duplicate act. And that's what Wireshark tells you too. Finally, this interesting one is that selective acts are not legally binding. A receiver can send a selective act to say it got or it received a bunch of data and then later it can change its mind. And so it means that normal acknowledgements are the only official way to acknowledge data. In the PowerPoint pack, I've included just this chart. This is a packet timing chart. And we're going to explore this same capture and I'll go in more detail of what, how to read a packet timing chart in, in a future video. But the key point here is on this chart, different kinds of packets have different shapes and colors. Because this video is about what do selective acts look like, I'm just pointing out that on this kind of chart, selective acts look like purple or pink um, diamonds. And in the legend here, you'll see what, what the other packets are. So there you have it. Here's where you can find me. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you, to be alerted about the future videos. My intention is to create more videos, uh, perhaps some educational and tutorial ones, and also continue this series of looking at different aspects of TCP and Wireshark and how NetData shows us. If you've got any capture files that have interesting behaviors and that you'd like to see as a video, let me know. If I agree with you, maybe they will become a video. Well, I hope you found that useful, and bye for now.